Hi there and welcome back. Let us look at a refrigeration cycle together. For this example, we are going to look at carbon dioxide refrigeration. Now, a refrigeration cycle, this means we will be rooting away heat from an end area we want to cool. This will be accomplished by manipulating pressure of the working refrigerant. You of a refrigerant, usually it can be used as an air conditioner or a refrigerator. And a refrigeration cycle consists of four steps, compression, condensation, throttling, and expansion, also the evaporator. Now, our aim is to cool water from 12 degrees to a minus zero degrees using carbon dioxide as a refrigerant okay let us build our system i am going to use cocoa simulation first things first you want to add your property package you can either do this by opening configuration t and adding your package for this scenario we are going to use carbon dioxide and water in this case i've already added my property package so i'm going to connect it to my system for our simulation we are going to need three parameters this include compressor condenser expansion valve and our evaporator so let us put everything on our page. We are going to need a compressor, an expansion valve. I will choose a heater cooler as our condenser. Let us use a heat exchanger as an evaporator. Since heat will be exchanged, we will be cooling water from 12 degrees to negative zero degrees. So I'll choose a heat exchanger. For our streams, let us start with the stream from expansion valve to the heat exchanger. For the heat exchanger, it's important to note that inlet one will go along with outlet one and inlet two will go along with outlet two. I'll connect my second stream from the evaporator to the compressor. My next stream will be from the compressor to the condenser and from the condenser to the expansion valve. We are going to cool water from 12 degrees to at least minus one or zero degrees. So I'm going to connect my water streams accordingly. Let's label our streams. For stream one, I'm still going to specify that stream one, but I'll just say stream one, carbon dioxide. This stream here will be water in. So the next step will be just to label our streams accordingly. I want to include my stream report. Let me include it here, even though there's still nothing yet involved. We are going to include the carbon dioxide stream and the water streams. Now let us fill in our streams with the values that are desired. We said we will be cooling water from 12 degrees all the way to zero degrees. For our water streams, we can say pressure is operated at two bar. And for the stream, we mainly have water and zero carbon dioxide. For the flow rate here, let us say 125. For the outlet stream also, we only have water at 125. It's also important to note that prior to this video, I did work on this example before myself and tried and manipulated the variables. So I've also figured out at what parameters, temperatures, and pressures this refrigeration cycle will achieve the desired value, which is zero degrees at the outlet water stream. From basic refrigeration cycle knowledge, we learned that the pressure at point two, which is this point here for me, will be the same as the pressure here at point one. The pressure from P3 will be equal to P4, which is the pressure out of the compressor, and turning the condenser will be the same as the outlet condenser stream. Let us operate the lower pressure at 27 bar and the high pressure at 60 bar. So I'm just gonna put in this values. We are going to use carbon dioxide as the refrigerant. This means the entire refrigerant cycle will consist mainly of carbon dioxide. So I'm just gonna edit all the streams into a more fraction of one for carbon dioxide. Also, let us keep the flow rate while well, it's gonna be constant at 150 kilograms per hour. Let's fill in everything accordingly. Great. Now, if we look back at our report, we are only short the temperatures. When you run the cycle for the first time, you might want to manipulate your um, power required or heat duty for the condenser or the power required for your compressor also the outlet pressure for the expansion valve so for the expansion valve we are going to say we want an outlet pressure of 27 since we said those streams will be operated at 27 bar okay so now for the first step i am going to run this file let us see what's going to happen okay it's not making sense um, so I'm going to reset everything. Um, for the condenser, we want an outlet temperature of 22 degrees. So if we said that temperature here will be 22, this means the stream will have a temperature of 22 degrees. For the expansion valve, we can say the temperature here will be at a minus, maybe minus 10, ranging to minus 9, 8, 7, 5. And obviously the temperature we expect it to cool as it comes down here. So it can cool to something positive. Now this temperature here, it's going to be extremely high um, and it's going to 
be influenced by the power required or energy demand used here let us add that energy demand we can say in kilowatts 3.91 let us run the file and see if everything balances okay it's still not making sense we did not cool our water to zero degrees it is at a positive which is this outlet stream here and we want to achieve a negative zero or just below one degree celsius so i'm just also going to edit that again reset so i just entered the temperature value that we can expect at the third stream here which is the compressor all the way to the condenser next step will be to edit the heat exchanger edit the heat exchanger type i'm going to change it to lmtd which is the logarithmic temperature difference let us see here 450 after manipulating the condenser heat duty we achieved 1.21 and as a temperature on the outlet stream another thing we can do is manipulate the water flow rate to 100 okay now that we manipulated our water flow rate to 100 kilograms per hour let us run our file we can see by observing that the temperature of the water outlet decreased a lot it went all the way to negative one let's try and increase that to at least 110 let's see if it's going to make any other differences negative 0 0.2 i think this is what we wanted to achieve we wanted to achieve a temperature of water outlet stream of negative zero entering at 12 so we did cool our water all the way down to a minus degree celsius and um, we can also manipulate the compressor here let's see we are operating at 319 let's see if we say 3.25 kilowatts per hour what's going to change there and the file okay so it did affect our water outlet stream um it didn't change much here so i'm going to take it back to where it was at I'm just going to say 3.20 kilowatts per hour run my file okay great so i'm happy with the water outlet stream um so far everything makes sense let us fill in our values okay now let us explain our refrigeration cycle so what we just did here we just cooled water from 12 degrees to a minus zero degrees using carbon dioxide for step number one we have our compressor which is the compression it is operated at high pressure and at high temperature of 60 bar the refrigerant carbon dioxide enters the compressor at low temperature and low pressure from the evaporator and it is at gaseous state the carbon dioxide will undergo compression through the application of compressor this will cause the gas to heat up under the pressurization and as a result carbon dioxide changing into its liquid form the second step is the condenser um, the pressure at condenser and at the compressor streams it's kept constant at 60 bar next step it's step number three the throttling step which is the expansion valve the pressurized carbon dioxide will move through the expansion valve which is the gateway into the area of low pressure next step is the evaporator in this case the scenario we use the heat exchanger here we have carbon dioxide at low pressure low temperature during this stage heat will be transferred and water will be cooled from 12 degrees to its minus zero degrees which is what we wanted to achieve as our aim and obviously we use carbon dioxide as the refrigerant i really really hope this was fun and you also enjoyed solving it with me um, if you have any ideas what we should solve next time feel free to comment down or send me an email i enjoy reading your emails thank you so much for watching till next time bye